ChatGPT4 is here and is significantly more powerful than version 3. And today we're going to be looking at what differences there are between GPT-3 and 4 all through OpenAI's announcement of GTP-4, with them claiming it is the most advanced system producing safer and more useful responses. But we'll be checking out how it achieves that and know that they have a current research preview for people paying the $20 per month to get the plus edition. But before we start paying that money, let's make sure that it's worth our while. So from the developers live stream and preview of OpenAI, they're showing us something very interesting here in the window. What you'll notice on the left hand side is basically a role or what I like to call roles for the AI. And then on the right hand side is where you input and get information out of the AI. Now the difference here is a little nuanced, but it's amazing because you can tell the AI what kind of role you want it to play. Basically here, they're telling it you are an AI programming assistant. I don't know why you need to put AI in there. It's kind of redundant to me, but it seems like they always add an AI to the role. So in this box, we tell it what role to play and you can even specifically tell what bounds it needs to play inside. On the right hand side is where you put your input and where the AI actually responds, much like what you do today with ChatGPT3, basically lets you hyper focus on the task at hand. So that's quite wild, but let's keep going and seeing what other capabilities it has. In casual conversation, the distinction between ChatGPT3 and 4 can be subtle. So it's hard to tell the differences between the two, but the real difference comes out when the complexity of task reaches a sufficient threshold, GPT is more reliable, creative, and able to handle much more nuanced instructions than 3.5. As we saw in that previous clip, the nuanced instructions come from being able to tell the AI exactly what its role is, which it makes it much more focused and in turn reliable. To understand the differences between the two models, we tested on a variety of benchmarks, including simulating exams that were originally designed for humans. We proceeded by using the most publicly available tests and or purchasing practice exams. There was no specific training on the exams and a minority of the problems in the exams were seen by the model during training, but we believe the results to be representative. All right, so let's check out the results there as they are quite interesting. Basically what we have here is the percentile that the AI received with respect to other human test takers. And we have in blue, ChatGPT 3.5 and in darker green, GPT-4. That's with being able to accept images or which is something we'll talk about in a moment. We can see that on most of these tests, GPT-4 was much better than 3.5 with the green exceeding the blue. Only a few outliers like these three here, this one, these two, this one, GPT-4 and 3.5 are at similar capabilities. Got this one here as well. But looking at some of these other ones, we've noticed that we basically went from around 25% all the way up to the 80th percentile, which is quite fascinating. That means ChatGPT-4 is able to do the test better than 80% of people. GRE quantitative is the test that's taken there, but let's just go through a few more of these, maybe some of the ones we understand better. So AP biology, we went from 60% to over 80%, maybe like 85% here. Another wild one is basically non-existent. ChatGPT 3.5 would have been around 0% for the AP calculus exam, but now it's over 45 percentile with the GPT-4 model. You can tell here it's pretty noticeable that this is kind of a linear graph that goes up and you can see that chat GPT-4 for the most part has really added on improvement across the board with over improvement on at least half the tests, which just goes to show you how much more powerful this data model set is. But before we get there, check out Delva.ai. Not sure how to start using AI for your business? Don't let your company fall behind. Start building an AI strategy today with Delva's AI Consulting. Schedule some time with Delva's AI Consultants and start integrating AI into your business. Again, check it out at delva.ai. There's a link in the description below. And another reason that ChatGPT4 is so powerful is that it can accept a prompt of text and images together. So not only can you put in text, but you can supply an image for the AI to now work on, which 
parallel to the text only setting lets the user specify any vision or language tasks. Specifically, it generates text output, natural language code, etc. given inputs consisting of interspersed text and images over a range of domains, including documents with text and photographs, diagrams, screenshots, GTP4 exhibits similar capabilities as it does on text only inputs. Furthermore, it can be augmented with test time techniques that were developed for text only language models, including a few shot chain of thought prompting. Image inputs are still a research preview and not publicly available, although they did show us this functionality during the developer preview. So let's check that out. So here's an example of where an image was submitted and then through Discord, the AI responded with what that image was. And it says this image depicts an astronaut exploring a snowy mountainous landscape on an alien planet and then goes more in depth, which seems to be kind of accurate. I mean, if I had to guess, this looks like snow up here, a rocky mountain hill. This looks like someone just pretty much floating in midair <laughs> with a really weird shadow. But anyways, we're not going to get into the accuracy of things here. It is amazing that now you can submit images and the AI replies on not only what that image is, but what's more impressive is when they show us here, they take a picture of a drawing that was made in a notepad. And then what they're going to do here is actually process that drawing through the AI to build a website. Albeit it is quite a interesting design to say the least, because here's what it looks like, right? Brief HTML or JavaScript to turn this mock-up into a colorful website where the jokes are replaced by two real jokes. So we get some context on what's going on here. And fascinating enough, they get this output from the AI, which if I'm just looking here, has created a heading called My Joke Website. They created two buttons that reveal jokes. Uh, let's see, joke text. They styled that with 24 pixels. And then they created two functions which actually reveal the jokes called reveal joke one, reveal joke two. So let's take a look at what that ends up looking like. And here it is after they put it in to an online code processor for HTML and JavaScript. It's not bad. I mean, it's nothing crazy to write home about, especially after they said make a colorful website, if I'm not mistaken. This isn't too colorful. Actually, the colors match pretty closely as they all seem to be either dark blues or light blues. Anyways, whatever. The impressive part is it took something that someone wrote on paper and actually made code from that image input. That's what we need to take home here. It is impressive that they've been able to build a model that can take simple, even drawn input and create code and work out of it. I'm super excited for this feature. Moving on, a third thing that is very impressive is now that it can take up to 25,000 words of text that allow you to process more extended conversation, document research, and just creation in general. One thing I really like about this is you can embed various different wikis, for example, and then tell it to do something on the wiki or a link or even a research paper, big context type of stuff that then the AI can get again, hyper specific information about something that it's not necessarily trained on. That is the important part to take away from here. It does not have to be trained on that material, just like you did with ChatGPT 3.5. You can give it some information and then say work around that information. But now, instead of being limited to, I think it was like 4,000 words, you're limited to 25,000 words. Very impressive. We'll see how this breaks down as ChatGPT4 gets released. Are you going to have to pay that $20 per month just to use the model? Is there going to be a free version like they do today? These are all questions that we have and will get answered as the months go by. Reasoning has been improved as well, where you can give it more complex input, as you can see over here, and then it can decipher and give you a more concise output. We revisit some of the percentiles among test takers where in the uniform bar exam, ChatGPT, the 3.5 version, was the 10th percentile versus the 90th percentile with GPT-4, and the biology Olympiad 31st percentile with ChatGPT 3.5 and 99th percentile with GPT-4. When it says with vision, it means accepting images. So another interesting thing that most of us have not realized is ChatGPT-4 is nothing new. ChatGPT-4 has been around for seven months. So what have they been doing 
in the background. Well, they spent six of those months making GPT safe and more aligned, making it better than chat GPT 3.5 because GPT-4 is 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content and 40% more likely to produce factual responses than GPT-3.5 in the internal evaluations. So basically they've been focusing on safety and alignment over the last half year, trying to make sure that it safely gives you results. They've also already collaborated with which Duolingo has taken advantage of to make their conversation model even better. Be My Eyes, another app already using ChatGPT4 for its data model. Other companies like Stripe and Morgan Stanley, Khan Academy and, and the government of Iceland all using the data model. But this one's kind of cool. This one allows students to use the Socratic method to talk through a chatbot on Khan Academy so that a student can learn better using this one-on-one -on -one setting with the AI. Good for them. I do like to see ways we can educate people further and more specifically at their own pace. Right now, the availability is it's available on ChatGPT+, and there's an API for developers, but you have to join a waitlist in order to use it. So make sure to either join the waitlist or try it with ChatGPT+. That's $20 a month if you're going to go that route. I'll make sure to post the links that I visited below, including the video that I showed. Let me know what your thoughts are on ChatGPT4. Are you excited for this new model? To be honest, I'm most excited about it actually getting some math right. Every time I would use it for actually really common things like bitwise math, 3.5 would, would fail pretty hard. I would pretty much stop using it just because I would never get a right answer. So that's one thing I'm excited about. Let me know what you're excited about. Let me know if you enjoyed the video by smashing that like button for me. Subscribe below for more programming, videos, news, and Linux. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.